Good morning for everyone, and it's it's very nice to be here and see you all. So we may discuss a little bit about uh, development of new uh, digital tools, software tools, and business models for silvicultural services, and also maybe discuss about little about the requirements of different operators, service providers, and forest owners there also. And um, in Finland, in, in the background also, it was, it, it was very nice to hear your presentation from Norway and uh, your perspective on precision forestry and the collection of data, data there. And uh, we have also recognized some same kind of uh, needs and requirements. So uh, our operational environment, it's changing rapidly, the needs for carbon sequestration and uh, then damage risk management um, and also the increase of resilience of trees against different kind of damages um, caused by climate change, for example. And then uh, there comes the need for um, increasing the variety of tree species, mixed species stands um, there. And then there come the traditional challenges also, so the cost efficiency, for example, and the need for um, replace the lacking labor there. So mechanization of silviculture, silvicultural operations, also through digitalization. And then this may be in the Finnish operational environment, but also there may be um, uh, challenges of underdeveloped service markets of uh, forest services there, etc., etc. Et also, there are challenges in the quality of uh, regeneration results and um, then areas of neglected uh, young stand management work, etc. But there are many challenges. But to do something. So, um, one approach is this precision forestry or uh, agile operations there, which um, take into account the soil and site um, properties better there, and also the needs of different kind of forest owners there. And this is one uh, example or concept of agile uh, silvicultural operations. So in the um, uh, soil preparation, there's a um, Locationing device, GPS or GNSS attached to the um, boom there, to the top of the boom, and then the exp excavator may carry even two uh, different buckets or devices there with a rapid change of those. And then, then um, you are able to locate different um, soil uh, preparation spots there and then uh, deliver this information for uh, seedling produ uh, production and logistics to provide the proper seeds there with different species, tree species or different properties there, for example. In addition, if you use mechanized planting, um, this uh, positioning of seedlings, it's, it's very, very handy. And also from the viewpoint of quality management, quality control and management, well, we have fairly long tradition of trying to improve the quality of operations, so more than 15 years. And um, in different um, silvicultural operations, the um, uh, forest workers then uh, measure their work and collect information. And nowadays, the, um, they put their measurements to the ERP system or quality control system, which or mobile one, which sends that to the system of the service provider operator. So um, there is also an opportunity you, to use the information of, of the operations there of silviculture more, of, of for example, um, soil preparation, planting, uh, youngstead management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you are able to collect also information there and use that to update the forest management planning systems. And also, of course, that is uh, connected to the uh, 
coordinates, which are getting more and more accurate. So there are nowadays um, also RTK uh, um, help in the positioning there. And in, in the Finnish context, for example, the coordinates for uh, soils preparation uh, spots, it's been already in the Finnish uh, forest data standard from the year, I think, 2016 or so. So, and now there's already second generation coming. But that was one uh, kind of concept to use data more there and um, then predict the coming operations and also, for example, to order the proper amount or proper number of seedlings there, not to carry too many seedlings to the site there. So just the seedlings to the prepared uh, spots there, not to the just unprepared unpre ground. And what we have been doing lately, so in the background there is the um, modeling of these service processes, operations there, and, and check what data may be obtained there, and also what are the challenges in the old-fashioned uh, and health measuring systems, and now to automize them, or at least to get coordinates to those. And there may be many uh, targets for that, for uh, productivity and cost efficiency there, there may be quality, there may be dependability, you are increasing for the logistics, uh, or reliability there, then the speed of operations, what there is, and then there comes the agility or flexibility of the operations to adapt, adapt to the site um, conditions there, and also to the needs of the forest owner. And uh, as in Finland, uh, Finnish Forest Center, it's collecting LIDAR data. Now it's already second round and they have a new uh, platform for sharing data. And also the state-owned forest data will be there in the future after the next round. So there will be opportunities to use the open data and also the private data of different operators then for different, uh, to develop different kind of tools and, and then use those. But the question comes, what kind of tools would be useful? And we have been working on that. So um, uh, firstly, what we have observed is that uh, different tools fit for different service providers and also there are different forest owners there. So it, it really depends, not just single tool for everyone, but they have to choose their own tools and think how they fit to their processes there. And uh, then we have been um, discussing and hearing their feedback, etc., cetera, uh, how the tools would be improved and what are the kind of bottlenecks there and also challenges. And also considering the technical feasibility of the services and operations there. Then there is the profitability issues, considering forest owner, considering the service provider and um, machine entrepreneur, for example, and also for the end user, for the um, forest owner, the desirability of, of the tool and then the operation which is built around it. And uh, also, what we have been doing, as we have now um, data distribution or sharing platforms also, there is one platform in Finland for um, timber trade, for example, at the moment. They have been considering of data fusion platforms, and then there will be the commercial platforms, even more with maybe, with maybe um, properties of social media, etc. there for the forest owners to um, serve the information and also then the, for the service providers to show how their service work and um, give also advice and uh, discuss sharing information, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of opportunities and I think it's important to discuss about this because we may also be able to share our um, Dif different kind of knowledge and experience what we have in order to jointly develop something maybe together. And uh, what we have been doing then is to ask of the 
service providers, operators, stakeholders in general, what kind of tools there would be needed. And it was actually um, very interesting to hear uh, of, of this morning of the data integration and using the data in different operations because the result is actually the same as you were telling that uh, the data integration application program, uh, programming interfaces, delivering data from one database or system to another, uh, then data transfer fusion and management, it's, it's very, they are coming is more essential in the future to able to utilize the data. So also that's recognized in Finland, for example. And then, for example, what comes there is the coast prediction using open forest data, maybe some closed sources also of the um, labor time there of uh, forest workers, therefore Youngstad management, etc. And there are some fairly nice models also um, provided from our research researchers, for, for example, from uh, Karri Otila here and Jari Mina here, what they have been doing using both open forest data, at least data from different sources there to create new models. Maybe in the future, those may be, may be more dynamic there in order to teach the model and then provide better predictions then for working time uh, prediction and estimating the costs of work, etc. And providing better pricing, better um, services for forest, forest owners then. And then um, also optimization and economic calculations. There's an increasing of those, even mobile ones, but maybe first uh, on um, desktops or bigger machines. Then, um, for example, for pre-harvest clearing need evaluation, there may be needed some tools from uh, previous previous stages of operations or forest owner um, visiting the site there. Then agile wood harvesting and transportation planning optimization. Um, here Kari Vatainen, for example, ha has published co uh, um, articles considering that one, if you are interested, what's been happening and also to get those tools for um, practical people there for the operators, for example, and especially the machine contractors, especially the big ones, etc., etc., also for forest companies. Then um, also remote services for forest services, selling those, checking information from, from the stand, remote visits there, maybe forest owner is there with mobile phone and then um, sends information for the uh, timber purchasing, um, uh, forestry professional, or also considering other operations there. So the aim is to obtain the data more um, um, cost efficiently there. Also, the, it comes to the silvicultural operations, seedling material identification and uh, tracking for logistics, also getting the seedlings to the proper spot for the bigger regeneration areas, etc. So these go on and on. There are also other, I don't um, maybe read all through, but um, okay, there's also what, what's there, I think today is the um, seedling counters and quality control uh, counting and also obtaining the information of, of the um, coordinates and quality of the work then um, for operations. So I think there are some concepts, ideas uh, presented and there I think there are several of those but I have to emphasize that different tools fit for different service providers and in that sense there is market for those and it's very nice to see that there are different, different efforts to uh, trying to build those tools. Also for soil preparation, uh, uh, reporting cameras and detecting different uh, site characteristics there, soil types there, for example, with um, machine learning, etc., etc., etc. So um, 
I think this presentation will be provided, so I don't read all through. So in the end here, um, uh, I think what we have been doing fin in Finland as an overview, we have been trying to think solutions to the challenges related to that kind of technologies that would uh, enhance these uh, value network networks we are working on. And um, I think still the main challenge is the uh, cost efficiency and the flexibility, ag agility now for uh, precision forestry. And there you are able to see also many, many subjects there, what we are talking today in addition to precision forestry, mechanized planting, information control of young stand management, and different kind of uh, digital business models coming, and di digital tools, digital transformations, transformation of, of the services and operations. And really, I'm um, looking forward to discuss with you of different kind of experience you have and what kind of needs and requirements you have noticed in your countries. So I will thank you all. Thank you very much. And I'm ex expecting to hear from you different kind of aspects and feedbacks and your perspectives on, on this. Thank you. <laughs>